All right, so, um, so Trump's gonna declare a national emergency. Shit, he's doing it right now. All right, so Trump just declared a national emergency. This is good news in a way, because it gives us our, uh, it gives more funding for the hospitals and the healthcare system. Maybe this can be attributed to more tests and all that stuff, but it also mobilizes FEMA, which is helpful for more healthcare providers. Now, let me get to the, let me get to the more uh, important thing. This virus was going to spread. It is highly infective. Is it highly fatal? We don't know yet. It hasn't mutated or we haven't seen new, new epidemiology and we don't have enough data yet. But the paper I read yesterday from Wuhan is that 190 something patients, they split it into the people who survived, people who didn't survive. The people who didn't survive are the older population, okay? Um, and the thing is with the older population, uh, the reason they didn't survive is because of comorbidities. Okay, that's the first part. The second part is that in China, the demographics there are not like the United States of America. In the United States of America, we get these diseases earlier in our age groups. Between 30s and 40s, we'll have hypertension, diabetes sometimes, it's getting more now. Um, we'll have um, you know COPDs and lung issues and all that stuff at an earlier uh, demographic age group than in China or that side of the world. Therefore, when it presented there and it affected only older people, it does not really correlate to our population. Our population has more disease at an earlier age. So that's why that's one thing that's that's um, something to look out for, okay? So this entire theory of only the old people are gonna get it, older people with comorbidities are gonna, yes, that's true. They are susceptible to it more than us and younger generation people, but it doesn't mean it's only gonna be the old people. The next thing is that the infectivity. How does it infect people, okay? It infects people um, by shedding, droplet spread. So uh, droplets shoot out from sneezing, coughing, breathing or whatever, but they don't go too far. They don't fly away in the air. That's airborne spread. This is droplet spread. They go out and they fall on the ground. That's something you guys need to know. How long do they survive on that surface? Now, if there's a one study that I read somewhere, they've, they've seen this corona strand or this strain survive up to nine days. So nine days sitting on a surface, you touch it, you touch your mouth, you have a high chance of getting it. That's number one. If you get it, this is even weirder and worse, is if you get it, it lasts on average 20 days in your body. What does that mean? You'll be shedding this virus, okay? Shedding this virus. That means that this virus goes inside your cells, replicates, and starts making more copies of itself. And when it makes more copies of itself, what's gonna happen is um, you will be releasing it in your secretions, nasal, uh, uh, coughing, sneezing, lacrimal, whatever it is. Uh, and then it, whatever surface you touch, nine days on there. 20 days you'll be doing this. Every day is a nine day, nine day period, nine day period, nine day period added. That's why this virus is so infective, okay? Um, and that's why they say wash your hands and all this stuff. Now, other studies in labs have shown that what kills it, right? Does washing your hands with soap and stuff kill it? Majority of the time, it's ethyl alcohol that kills it. One minute. So you have to sing happy birthday to me or you like two times, okay? Or whatever, while you wash your hands. Um, that might most likely kill it. The mask thing. For example, we have these masks here. We have to reuse these. These are called N95 masks, right? Everyone wants an N95 mask. And um, they think that that's gonna prevent the virus from coming out or coming into them, okay? Now, let me tell you something. There's surgical masks, which is over here. Uh, these things, right? These are the surgical masks, right? They're blue, some are yellow, right? These are the N95 masks, which are supposedly tighter, okay? Now, the problem with that is the size of the, of the, of the virus. The size of the virus. So N95 can keep out anything between... Um, around 0.3 microns. The size of the coronavirus is like anywhere from 0.08 to 0.15 microns. Smaller than this. You can't see past this. Microscopic holes, right? So the thing here is, the thing to do here is, it's good if you have thick secretions that are coming out like coughing, sputum or whatever. But in theory, it's, to, it's for people who are sick coughing out. But there's no guarantee even in that method of, um, prevention right fine the size of this particle the size of this particle is everything and the reason why is 
Larger particles like the flu, rhinoviruses, adenoviruses, which cause a common cold, they'll get stuck in your upper respiratory tract. Call. All right, so I'm back with that call. Um, so these rhinoviruses, adenoviruses, uh, flu, influenza, bacteria, these are large particles. They don't go too deep into you unless they're infective and all that stuff, okay? The point is that they'll go into your upper respiratory, your nose, oral cavity, throat, up here, your cough, okay? Maximum is gonna cough. Usually, you don't get pneumonias deep. The coronavirus is so small, it can go deep into your um, respiratory tract, into the, you know, bronchioles and alveoli, and infect and replicate down there. And that's why we see all these ARDS, right? SARS-CoV, severe acute respiratory coronavirus, right? This is SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, same thing. Um, that's why this thing is so destructive. Okay. It's going to go everywhere in the world. Okay. This is actually going to spread literally everywhere on our planet because it's infective. It lasts in our body and we keep shooting it out like a factory. Sorry. Okay. I think he's Trump's answering questions still about the um, national emergency. I left off at this. It's going to go everywhere in the world, right? It's highly infective. The effect that it will have on our population is still unfolding hour to hour. Kids, they don't have all the comorbidities adults have. Therefore, they're less susceptible to this. It gets really deep. I mean, about the hypertension and ACE inhibitor receptors where it attaches a lot of theories, scientific ones, not made up ones. Regardless, kids can be healthy carriers. They can spread the disease to the grandfathers, grandmothers, even your, their parents, you know, anywhere. So that is why steps need to be taken in order to prevent a spike in the number of cases. We can have a sustained amount of cases for a long period of time without crashing our healthcare system. And that is the goal from now. The goal is to limit the infectivity and the rate of infectivity. Because we know, or at least I believe, that eventually a majority of the population will be infected in one way or the other. How severe it is, is a different complete topic. But if everyone gets infected in a very sharp amount of time, like right now, let's say today, everyone gets infected, the doors of this hospital will burst open and we don't have enough ventilators or respirators. I'd have to make a decision on who gets a vent and who doesn't based on age or whatever. That is a horrible situation to be in. It's a horrible situation as a human being, as a physician, it's just an all-around person for that person, the families. The social implications of that will cause chaos and all this stuff. Look around right now, people are buying up groceries. They're buying up things. Um, it, it, it's like a movie. We are going to Walmarts and all this stuff, stocking up on ammo, water, uh, foods, non-perishables, whatever it is. It is pandemonium because there's not one unified voice guiding us. The most important thing I think is very important is we have to practice with ourselves, our own ability to, you know, um, prevent the spread by washing our hands, um, avoiding large crowds, um, you know, social distancing. These measures are good so we can have a sustained entry into the healthcare uh, environment. But as of now, we are trailing, we are fighting, you know, behind. We're not ahead of this disease. And I think step by step, things are gonna unfold and we're gonna figure this out ultimately. And we're gonna find a way through this. This virus is changing and we're learning more and more about it. So um, I'll keep you guys updated as much as I can. I just wanted to get it out there, um, all the stuff that I know. And this is definitely not my formal video. My formal video is just like, it's been broken down into like how this started to where we are today. Thanks. Uh, I don't want to be, um, you know, a uh, pessimistic or an alarmist uh, person. I think it came off a little too strong in the last one. I think we can do this together. We have to care for each other, prevent the disease as much as possible, and look out for the future.